Good morning, everyone. This is Reverend Mike Capron from the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park. We just had our Easter service by conference call uh, here in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. And um, for those who weren't able to be with us, I'm going to record the Bible reading and the sermon. I'm going to be reading from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple, John, started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who'd reached the tomb first also went inside, and he saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, bent at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This ends our reading. The Gospel of John doesn't tell us anything about what happened in between Jesus' burial on Good Friday and what happened that Easter morning. Like us, Jesus' followers were probably socially isolating, not seeing anyone outside their own group. There was every chance that the authorities might take some action against them, so keeping a low profile was a good idea. They were sad. They were lonely. They felt betrayed. They were tired, just worn out, anxious, and grieving. Probably a little testy, too. It may have been with some relief that Mary Magdalene slipped out on her errand, leaving all the male egos behind. We don't know the weather, of course, but I think we all imagine it to have been cool and clear, maybe a day a lot like today. Mary left while it was still dark and saw the sunrise. There's an old legend that the light of the day of the Lord, that prophesied day, will be seen in Jerusalem first as the light comes in over the ridge on the east. Perhaps she was musing on that when she entered the garden and laid eyes on the tomb. She pulled up short, wide-eyed. The stone sealing the tomb was off to one side. She ran up, looked inside, and had her worst fears confirmed. Someone had stolen the body, and so she set off at a run back the way she came. John and Peter heard her words of alarm and began running for the tomb as well, with the winded Mary bringing up the rear. 
John got there first and paused to look in. How odd, he thought, the way the headcloth is separate from the linens and how neat everything looks. Peter came thundering up from behind and went straight in. John stepped in behind him. There was hardly room for both of them in that small space. They didn't fully grasp what was going on. Mary and Peter were upset, but John felt this sense of peace settle over him. No one understood yet that he had to rise from the dead, but John was developing this strong sense that everything was going to be all right. He and Peter started walking back to the others. Mary stayed there with, with tears running down her cheeks. Maybe she, she dabbed at them a little bit with a cloth. And when she saw them, the two young people dressed in the brightest white in the tomb, how did they get in there? And what were they saying? Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they've put him. And she turned around, and there's somebody else. She sees Jesus, but she didn't know it was Jesus. She wasn't in the same he wasn't in the same gleaming white as the people in the tomb. He looked rather ordinary, like maybe the groundskeeper or something. Jesus is like that sometimes, just another guy, just like one of us. And he asked the same question, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? She babbled out, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll get him. And then he said her name. That was all it took. He said her name. That is how it goes. Jesus says your name. And you recognize him. You call him teacher. You call him savior. You call him Lord. You call him friend. You name him Jesus. You give one of his titles. Messiah. Christ. Prince of Peace. Hope of the world. He names you, and you name him. He knows who you are, and you know who he is. You know that he was dead, and you know that it doesn't matter. You know that you will die, and you know that that doesn't matter either. Because there was an empty tomb in that little garden all those years ago, the corpse was missing as a sign that we will all be reborn into new life. Jesus is just the first fruits of the resurrection from the dead. I've tried this year, as I try every Easter, to make this story seem fresh to you, to try to recapture some of the magic we felt when we were children comprehending it for the first time. That is a worthy goal, but probably unnecessary. It isn't necessary that we feel the surprise and the amazement of those first Easter people, John, Mary, and Peter. What is necessary is that we are Easter people. I know you, First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park. I know many of you who may wind up listening to this. I know that you know this story. I know that you've based your lives on this story. If you haven't, I hope you'll consider it. I know that you've plunged into the waters of baptism, renounced sin and selfishness and evil stuff, and determined to live the life of faith in Christ. I've seen the way that you care about one another and for one another. I've seen the way my congregation cares about the world. That's what it is all about, my friends. First, you see the glory of God in all its confusing, even fearsome splendor. And then you realize that it applies to ordinary people like us. And that the gardener standing over there, wait, why does he look so familiar? Then you understand the love, the love that is freely given to us. And then you share the love with each other and with everyone. And the love leads you back to the splendor and the promise of resurrection and the new life. That's what it's all about. Happy Easter, everyone. Amen. Just a brief epilogue. 
a little later in John 20, it says that they were, they were all sealed together out of fear, isolated from everybody. And suddenly, Jesus appears among them and says, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. I pray that you will have that same sense of Jesus being with you wherever you're self-isolating during COVID-19, that you will have a blessed Easter and a good week, uh, and that you will hear and live the good news. Amen.